This is Robin Nelson here at Horror Hound Film Festival here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I just saw a great indie horror film. I felt like I was shrooming the whole time. It was called Compression. I'm here with uh, filmmakers Emily and Jacob. How's it going, guys? Oh my gosh, it's been a crazy day. So I, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I got some hardware. Yeah, um, yeah we, but... we, we're feeling pretty good after the premiere. People seem to like it, and, and we, I was not expecting the award love. But yeah, no, we're... Um, in a fugue state right now, is any of this real? I think so. I like know. people keep saying, "Hey, do you want to have food?" And I'm like, "Yes, please, please, we need some food." But otherwise, oh, like it's been, eat. it's been such a cool weekend. It has been very cool, full of like all sorts of supportive people, and and now people finally got to see our movie, and it's awesome. And it's, it's a horror hound, which I love so much. Yes. It's a, a okay. I love horror hound. I come all the time. It's just a. You know, attendee, and it's, it's weird to be on the other side. I've never come as a filmmaker, and so yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't dream of a better place to like start off here. So, so. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, the movie gave me Mandy vibes and the color of space vibes. Thank you. You just made my day. I uh, I, I love I love both of those movies, especially Mandy. Mandy was a, visually uh, and totally like a very big influence on the film. So thank you for watching that. Oh, I did. Um, let's also talk about. Um, when you guys did this film, was this like off, like you lost your cat? Because like that's the vibe I got. Because I noticed in the film it's a picture of a cat, so I kind of figured maybe you guys lost the cat. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, um, so it, it actually started out before we lost our day. Um, uh, her, name, uh, her name is Iggy, we dedicated the movie to her, um, but uh, Peter and uh, Peter, our producing partner, and Jake are sort of writing the script together. Um, Peter had the first 20 pages written, and he said, hey, Jake, like, see what you can do with this. I think you should make this movie. You should make a movie like Mandy. And he's like, oh yeah, cool. And then our, our little Katie, she was only a year old, got really sick really fast. It was really upsetting during the pandemic. It was um, right and, in the middle of the writing process. Um, like the night before she died, the emergency pet or pet vet place was closed and we had to stay up all night with her, make sure she stayed alive and then she passed in my arms the next morning. Um, and that was, um, the, the, some of those scenes uh, in the movie, like the, uh, it comes in a glass, taking the wine bottle off. Uh, that was something that was really said by Jake uh, yeah, there, during that time. There were a lot of uh, autobiographical moment, moments uh, in the film kind of as a result of that. Um, the movie originally was much more of a kind of a home invasions like riff, like, okay, uh, is this all in her head? Are there people actually in the house? Is there a threat? Is she being attacked? And uh, then after, I, I went into a pretty heavy depressive episode for a month or two. I, kind of don't remember but uh, when I came back to writing the script I was like this is about loss and then all of the the movie sort of shifted from being about like external wounds to internal wounds and it's like a this is about the scars on your heart not the ones on her back and that was um that, that was sort of the shift and that's when uh, I always kind of like knew the adrenaline uh, no, let me try that again I always kind of knew the adrenaline of the movie with the tone but that's how I found the heart was uh sucks but we kind of had to go through that we had to press on some bruises a little bit um, a lot yeah. That. yeah i felt the pain through all that and i love how you guys did the cover schemes in each scene because when you did it in certain rooms it felt like it was different emotions which she was mm -hmm. going off on where you can really feel and see what she was doing and plus in those scenes were like pretty bloody you know brutal as well so when you did the role um how hard was it for you to get out of the character after you were done filming you know Ooh. turning that on and off and then when you're done with it you know how some actors you do like a like a real deep role, and sometimes it's hard to get out of it when you're done filming. Mm -hmm. um, I would say uh, day. To, so we had principal photography like two weeks in the the house. Eleven days. Um, yeah. Eleven days in the house, um, and so for that stretch, um, I could pretty much live in Hazel World. Um, but it for me as an actor, it's pretty easy for me to bop in and out. I like to find um, the similarities with my character, pull that from me, and then like look at the differences like a Venn diagram and kind of pull from that. So um, taking a step out of it, like getting back into my street clothes to go home into, like um, in between takes, I would put on my little slipper socks or um, things like that. But then also um, when we were filming in the woods um, the, with the, all the blood and stuff, um, leading up to that, I knew like I had to stay in a certain headspace. So I told everybody ahead of time, I need to not engage with you because I've got to stay here because I want to joke and laugh with all my friends. Like, and I, I, there were several times on set I had to put like a sign on my door, like, hey, don't talk to me. I have to look at my lines, guys. Um, because I just, I just love our, our people that were around. But yeah, in the voice scene, I, um, in between takes or if we were setting up for a new shot, I would go off by myself and do kind of some pacing 
team um, uh, because I knew I had to like had to see my my partner pass in front of my eyes, right? So um, that that was the preserving that was important to me. So I made that a priority. Outside. One more question. Let's talk about the painted man. Okay. I know this, you know, the red blood paint. I heard someone mention that. I go, that's my question. I was going to ask that. Wow. But yeah, that was pretty good. Um, who made that painting? Oh, it's oh, her cousin, I, yeah, actually. Um, uh, my cousin, Adam Wagner. Yeah. Um, we commissioned that from him. He actually also did the painting of the two cats. Um, yeah, that's in the movie. And, and, and then the, and there's uh, a skull the big, painting. The, big, the skull painting and then the big uh, mm -hmm. spiral circle that's in the bedroom behind, like when you're mm -hmm. saying, like, you know, she's safe in her bed, that part. So the, the one that looks like a black hole. Yeah, like a yeah. void. Yeah, like a, there, a lot of the key art. Uh, we also had a lot of key art from Eric Jones, but uh, Adam did. Uh, the, it kind of was all reverse engineered around, like, the look of the painting. Yeah, and it was... Um, it was one of those things he started working on it and it, I, I feel like the first draft was perfect and he, mm -hmm. he digitally painted that mm -hmm. um, which just boggles my mind but it ended up looking a little like Kevin with our, um, our, our uh, Elijah he had without, no idea who we cast him. yeah he had no idea and it just kind of it was serendipitous in that way and um, Adam Wagner art like he is he's amazing like, oh, yeah. definitely Adam's... buy all his art or commission something from him Please. And, how cool is it that, it's like a family affair. It's my cousin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, like, you know, filmmaking, you're always like, oh, yeah, we become, become this little family. But it's like, it really was because it was like so much of our closest friends and family, like, working on it. It became. And, um, our, our friend um, Megan Levitt uh, yeah. did uh, the painting man, like, the physical painting. Yeah, for when it came to life. So, yeah. um, so Adam did the, the, the painting, and then she um, emulated that with um, Kevin's costume yeah. on set. So, uh, and that was really cool. He had to get into it, and then she painted him. Mm -hmm. All right, one yeah. more last question. Yeah, yeah. This is this is for you, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have fucking great taste, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And he's so handsome and so talented. Yeah. And so, like, and we create together. Oh, we see, I thought you were talking about other. the line in the movie, and I was like, well, oh no, yeah, you're talking about oh, me. I thought no, you were I'm talking about I'm talking that in the line. Yeah. <laughs> At least you got fucking taste. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that was after a long stretch of takes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when we got so, that take, I, 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 the way you did that line was like, nah, fuck it, don't ask for another one. <laughs> it was great. And congratulations for all the oh awards, my God, thank you. man. So you much. guys nailed it, man. I felt yeah. the tears and emotion through you. You're like, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a lot. I, I'm going to be processing this for a minute here. <laughs> it's, thank you. It, it's very cool. Like, yeah. yeah, I think we need to, we need to eat, we need to take a nap, and then yeah. we're going to wake up, and then we'll be like, where it will and finally then, be like then, it'll hit us then you want to go make another one let's make another one okay. yeah yeah well yeah that's the plan all right thank you so much guys thank, thank you. you so much for thank you friends you. thank you so much man that